Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Anil Joshi. Welcome you to my series Iconology and Temple Architecture Perspective. In Hampi, the monument we are going to visit today is Varaha Temple. Varaha Temple is a beautiful temple in its own ways and we will see it in more detail today and we will find out why it is equally important as that of the other temple because Hampi has got lot of big temples, big architectural designs, big size temples. In spite of that, why Varaha temple should be visited by every one of us. I am going to tell you the reason with the help of uh, photographs and videos so that you can appreciate it. Hampi is very very important not only from those who follow religion but also for those who follow history and for also those who want to know why India was called as the most prosperous country in the world. Why Vijayanagar was called as the richest town richer than Rome at its time that is in 15th century. So for that it has to meet certain criteria. It has to have a biggest trading center. It was the biggest trading center in Asia as far as horses, diamonds, gold, silver are concerned not only that it was also a biggest market for the weapons then uh, also for those who want to sell their horses then the camels believe it camel I said even camels were sold here and the city was so prosperous that it had a supermarket of diamond silver and gold separately horse market separately so also a market of pan supari that was also a separate big markets I mean uh, stalls hundreds of stalls were there now all these things were attracting many foreign visitors is it that the only place for the trading no it was also a historical place a lot of events mentioned in Puranas and Ramayanas have occurred here this was a Kishkinda in Puranas in Ramayana it was the birthplace of Lord Hanumana it was a kingdom of uh, Wali and Sugrivas and Prabhu Ramachandra has stayed here while going to Sri Lanka for a couple of days he has worshipped here Shiva whose temple is still there and also there are many other architectural iconological temple designing point of view like a Vithala temple which has got a musical pillar here there are plates which can sing after Vithala temple you can also see big Gopuram that was there in the Hampi big Gopuram singing pillars of uh, Vithala and also royal enclosures now royal enclosures means it was a king's palace and a place for activity at that time you can see ruins but that can give you how much gorgeous it would have been we have heard of stories of Telani Ram and uh, Krishna Devaraya which has occurred here now here there are big elephant stables which means that they have large number of elephants with them they were having processions of horses elephants there in front of stable then they have a large zanana which was including a lotus palace then also there is queen's bath summer palaces their queens were staying absolutely in comfort and what kings were doing every day morning they were going for a war exercises that was in front of elephant stable where they had teachers right from Mongolia so they are learning all arts of uh, war here and you can also see certain uh, pushpakaranis that is the wells the designing of which is it's such a geometry and with uh, such a preciseness that you will be just stunned looking at it and believe it it was constructed in a very short time go anywhere in the town you will find a gopuram of virupaksha temple go anywhere in town you will see hills of the matinga hills then uh, hanuman birthplace that is anjanadri hills so also many temples many supermarkets so do visit hampi after a brief idea main aim of our series is to give you a brief idea of multiple monuments however that is not possible to cover in one lecture therefore we have got multiple lectures stay tuned to us see our multiple videos subscribe to us and enjoy the wealth of knowledge and know why india was the most powerful why vijayanagara samrajya was most powerful why it was the largest supermarket why it was attracting tourists 
all throughout and what was the technological advances let's get going to each topic the varaha temple is one of the most impressive temple in hampi the structure is famous for its architectural beauty and carvings on the walls the temple is located at the northern end of the korsan street and is close to the river side the varaha temple is dedicated to varaha swami one of the 10 incarnations of lord vishnu by which he saved mother earth so everybody should know vishnu avatar as before understanding what is the varaha swami the temple is protected structure under the asi department and it is looked after by them maintained by them and they have done such excellent restoration work that even you will get surprised and it is our pleasure it's our luck that we can see it though in a broken stage though in a ruined stage we can adequately imagine how it would have been at that time to that extent archaeology department has restored it we went there from sugriva gufa uh, from sugriva gufa we went to one temple at the hill and from there in between sugriva gufa and the achyuta narayana temple we get this varaha temple so it's a temple in between is beautiful and it is east facing temple located at bifurcation of major riverside path the trail that connects Kodandarama temple to the Vithala temple pass along and the southern wall of the Varaha temple is adjacent to it at the point a bridge trail heads southeast to the Achutraya temple i'm going to show you in photographs the way towards Achutraya temple and from here to Achutraya temple was the Achutraya market a fairly almost more than half a kilometer to 1 kilometer distance surrounded by ruins of the big market achutraya market that also going to see in some other video from vara temple you can spot a ragunatha temple just across the path in front of the achutraya temple tower at the end of korsan street these temples are near about they look near about but when you start walking especially if it is past 10 and hampi heat then you really feel start feeling the distances but the monuments in the street the ruins ruins of the market the structures will make you so happy that you will never know when you cross the road and you will get lost in the memories that how it would have been at the time of Vijayanagara Empire. So that's a historical aspect. Let's go to historical aspect. The Varaha Temple was built in 13th century during the reign of Vijayanagara Empire when they were at peak of their prosperity. It was a significant place of worship in that era. The Vishnu is one of the most popular deity of the Hindus. As such, the incarnation Varaha was also much reverted by the people of hampi so equally worshiped lord vishnu also avatars of vishnu also and lord shiva also now legend has said that varaha the mythical boar was the third incarnation of lord vishnu according to hindu mythology the reasons behind the varaha incarnation of the lord vishnu was to protect the mother earth from demon named here in here in nikashpu the demon had dragged the earth to the bottom of the might ocean lord vishnu appeared as the varaha and went inside the ocean to rescue the earth a long battle took place between uh, hiranyakasha and the varaha it is believed that the battle lasted for about thousands of years now finally the varaha emerged victoriously and saved the mother earth from the demon's hand so there was a sigh of relief and big celebrations the emerge out of the ocean by carrying the earth between his task and this time we are first time demonstrated the world that earth was round because they have shown earth as a round with varaha indicating the earth 
was round known to our ancestor people right in the 8th century so almost 1200 back when the world was thinking earth is plate like and not square so these were the first people to tell earth is round that is to a varaha incarnation now as such he is also known as eternal upholder of the earth so a very important god who saved this earth from demon the varaha temple was built in a typical vijayanagara style of architecture the temple complex is rectangular area bound by a large compound wall the huge entrance tower adorns one side of the complex though damaged a large extent the entrance tower still reflects the beauty and grandeur that was once upon a time there and even you can imagine it when you look at the structures though ruined you can imagine it and that is the main reason why you should spend more time in such areas you should sit there close your eyes and start imagining how the thing would have been at the time of vijayanagara the walls of the temple has the images of uh, reclaims of the wild boar carved on them vara wild boar is carved on them some of the carvings represent the insignia of the vijayanagara kings the royal insignia of vijayanagara composes of four elements now this is very important to whom they are given importance so a royal insignia of the vijayanagara what has it has got varaha that is a wild boar the sun moon and a dagger so they were representatives in the vijayanagara insignia the presence of an image of royal insignia in the temple wall is displayed and one can have look at it and they will know the significance of all these things so photographs are important the top portion of the beautiful entrance gate is no longer and there was a damaged logo was there but it is no more the sanctum sanctorum is empty chamber as the idol is no longer there no worships no pujas the carvings on the walls are amazingly sights the bas relies on the walls display a skill of craftsman who work on the temple the temple is managed under the archaeological survey of india the recently the archaeological survey of india partially has renovated it but look at the beauty they have maintained the ancestral pattern while going you will not know at first sight that water structures are repaired but looking at the markings looking at the numbers looking at the some changes in stone shades you can make out that this is a restoration work but this is a marvelous attempt by karnataka government and asi department thanks a lot to them because we can appreciate beauties of uh, vijayanagara empire through this this outside portion of the temple where you can take a rest this is the board of varaha temple see the temple on the left side you can take a rest for here if you are tired or you feel like but i'm sure once you get involved in these uh, beautiful structures you don't feel like taking rest you'll feel like seeing more more and more and you'll like to spend more time in looking at them look at the sculpture look at the beauty and look at the reconstructive work also in a way they have done so much finery they are try to restore actually what they do is they try to collect the material found in this area and they try to put it inside sometimes they make some changes also like if you see 
in uh, Vithala temple, then uh, Garuda chariot. It was earlier pulled by horses, but now they have put elephants to it. So they do some different work, but they try to match the earlier glory. Now what you are seeing on left side is a way towards the Achutraya temple and market. Look at this way goes, right? You can see some ruins of the market. From here till Achutraya temple, there is a big marketplace. Now imagine thousands of people are there, thousands of horses, thousands of uh, uh, foreigners. We had Persian bringing their horses. We had pearls, diamonds, gold sold on the road. Then so also silk. All over the world it was brought and sold here. It was a one big market constituting four marketplaces which we have got different video and definitely I'm sure you will visit them and you like the videos. So with that, we are coming to end of this small topic. I hope I have given you good idea within my capacity of the Varaha temple. If you have more, let me know. If I have added into the knowledge, yes, then give us a like. And if you, are, if you feel you should see more like this, then subscribe our channel. Thank you, goodbye and take care. See you again in next video shortly.